Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, May 15, 2024. I pray that you are in good spirit this morning and I pray that as you go throughout the day that the Holy Spirit will go with you. May you look to Him and may you depend on Him as you seek to walk in God's favor. Our reading today comes to us from Revelation chapter 1. And we will read from verse 9 to 20. And it says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isles that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Tyra Tyra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and gird about with paps with a golden girdle. His head and his ear were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and of death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Amen. We are thankful for his holy words this morning. And this is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now let us go through it now. So John started out by addressing himself. He said that he is our brother and that he share in our tribulation means that he's just like us and he's going through the same thing we are going through. But we understand that at this point when John was writing to us that he was a prisoner on the Isle of Patmos. So he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and from scriptures we know what the Lord's day is, right? When is the Lord's day? according to what the scripture says i will leave that for you to type in the chat so he addresses himself and he says that he was in the spirit on the lord's day so we can clearly identify here that it was a saturday or it was the sabbath because that's when the lord's day is according to scripture now god identify himself again by stating who he is he says that what he is the alpha and the omega we went through that yesterday he's what the first and the last and so he informed john that he should write the things that will be revealed to him so that he can send these information to the seven churches in asia and you know the seven churches when he turned around he was immediately caught up in a vision and what he saw was seven golden candlesticks and we will get to those golden candlesticks a little bit down. So in the midst of those seven candlesticks, he saw a figure. He saw someone. And this is what he saw. He said that the person or the figure that he saw was one like the Son of Man. And he says that this, the Son of Man was clothed 
with a garment down to his foot, right? And he had a golden girdle. He said that his ear, the hair on his head, it was white as wool, like snow. And his eyes, they were like fire. What a description. Then he went on to say that his feet, they were, were like fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. And his voice, they were like what? The sound of many water. No, there's a lot of controversy in the world today surrounding the identity of God or Jesus or what he looks like or what he doesn't look like. And to tell you the truth, that is insignificant. Why is it insignificant? Because it shouldn't matter whether God is black, white, pink, blue, red, green. The fact remains that he is God. And we are so caught up in this identity look-alike crisis that we want God to look like us. So if I'm black, God must look like me because I'm black. And if I am white, God must look like me because I'm white. You don't have the authority to make that claim. God is who he is. And I'm so glad that Revelation give this description because it doesn't state here that God is black, neither did it say that God is white. It gives a vivid description of what John saw, right? So just work with that description. So he has white ear, his eyes are like fire, his skin or his feet is like bronze. So it's neither black nor white, but this description that we are given is only specific to God and God alone. So this alone should make us throw the whole idea of color out of our mind and stop with these confusing thought that we are having and allowing these kind of conversation and these kind of thinking to interfere with our relationship with God because that's not important. What is important is that he came and he sacrificed himself for you and for me. His blood was red, one writer say, and from his blood was red, that is more than enough. You don't need to know what color he was. And we have all these theories. Oh, the white man created this white Jesus to do this and to do that. And Jesus was a black man and this and that and this and that and this and that. Come on, friends. We need to be more mature and we need to be more wise in the way that we think. We serve an intelligent God. And these kind of conversation, these kind of things, they are petty, insignificant. And these are some of the things that are going to make a lot of people lose their way. Because what? They are focusing and zooming in on the wrong things. Enough said. So, after he saw God moving amongst the candlestick, he went on to say that he heard the voice. And the voice was like water or many waters. Do you remember according to scripture what water means? people right so his voice sounded like a crowd of people a whole lot of people so it was a very loud sound that okay, when a crowd is speaking it sound very loud eh? and in his right hand he did what he had seven stars and then out of his mouth what came what a two-edged sword and his countenance was what like the sun so let's take apart these three things the seven stars what they represent according to the reading they represent what angels amen and what the sword what does that represent the word of god we said two-edged sword old and new testament amen do we see that and this countenance like the sun the strength of the sun which suggests that his glory was so bright he was so bright that you can't look directly at him because can you look directly in the sun and if you can for how long so you can see the comparison so you are getting a, a full description of what god look like or some idea of what he might look like or he looks like so the other things they are irrelevant irrelevant i tell you and because of what john saw he was so struck by what he saw that he felt like he was dead and jesus answered him and said look here i am he that was dead and then God responded and tell him. And then Jesus responded and said, Look here, fear not, man. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am the same God who walked with you while I was here on earth. I'm that same God. I am he that was dead and now is alive. 
and I am alive and will be alive forevermore. I have the keys of hell and death. So, what can we learn from that? So, if John was struck down by death or was overtaken by fear, the perfect person to bring restoration and to drive that fear out of him is the man Christ Jesus. Amen? So, you see the God that we serve? This God is not a God for us to be taken lightly. We need to give God the respect he deserves and stop playing games. Stop playing games and farming fool of ourselves. Because the only one that is going to be hurt in the hen is us if we don't get it right. So think about that. And so he told John, write down these things, the things that you will see hereafter. So it means therefore that he's going to give him a couple more vision and he's telling him that whatever he sees and whatever he tells him that he is to write it down. Remember I spoke to you yesterday about love letter? So John here is the scribe, if you want to use that. He's writing down the information being given to him. Alright, so let us examine and decipher the whole idea about the stars and the angels and all of that. Let's see what they mean. In the final verse it says that, The mystery of the seven star which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, this is the meaning thereof. It says that the seven stars are what? seven angels and the seven candlesticks are what seven churches now let's let's break that down a little bit more according to the scripture what does angel represent messenger right do we remember that or do we know that yes angels mean messengers and star mean angels and here the candlesticks mean what churches and Remember, woman also means church, according to scripture. And who is the church? You, me. We are the church. So, I hope we are getting the connection and we are seeing it clearly. And just go back and read the text a little more. You will see exactly what I'm saying. So, as we continue to read the word of God, let us ask the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and clarity. And when the Holy Spirit reveal to us what is truth and what the Lord is saying to us, may we be obedient and may we follow the word of God. I pray that God will continue to keep us faithful until his soon return as we continue to live a faithful life in Jesus' name. Amen.